So I've had the EP E70A for about eight months now. So I thought it's time to do a quick report on these. And to be honest, I've not really used these every single day after getting them. I've uh, been using them sort of intermittently. So uh, I've been I've given them to mum to use, my mum to use. So she's been using it a lot because she's been flying uh, and enjoying the active noise cancelling. But here's a quick summary as to how it's been faring over the last eight months. On a build front, it's fared pretty well because uh, from the start, I, I thought that it's got a very premium build. It's got a very good feel uh, and touch to it. The headband part that sits behind your neck is a nice soft rubber, so it is grippy. Uh, it's, it's nice to use, I'd say, if it's on the skin in cooler months. During summer months, it can feel a bit sticky if you're in a if you live in a very sweaty place, uh, a very high humidity. Whereas if you're going to be using this in an office environment where there's an air conditioner, or if you put it over a collar, it's perfectly fine. Uh, you don't really feel any issue with it, and the fact that it grips, I think, is a big plus point. The rest of the neckband has a matte finish, so I'm very glad that they're not using the glossy uh, finish because I just despise that since it picks up a lot of scuffs and scratches over time. This is fared pretty well. It's uh, usually being put back in a case. Uh, when it's not being used, uh, it's usually around a neck as well. It's not really being tossed around without being in the pouch that it came with. So uh, it has fared pretty well on a build front. And one thing I do like on the build front and feature front for that matter is they've incorporated tactile buttons. So you don't ha have any touch or swipes anywhere. It's no nonsense. You have a play pause button, a volume up and down button and an ANC button and all of them are working perfectly fine. There's no real issue with it. I like the fact that they have that tactile feedback. Uh, and I wish a lot more companies still stuck to the tactile buttons. Coming back to the neckband in particular, if you do live in a dusty environment, expect this rubber to hold onto particles of dust because uh, it is grippy, like I mentioned. So uh, if you do want to keep it clean, it's worthwhile wiping it once in a while with a slightly damp uh, microfiber cloth. It is bound to pick up uh, dust particles if you were to leave it on your desk or even if it picks up dust from around your collar and so on it's bound to stick to it so that's one thing to keep in mind if you're very particular about how sensitive it is to dust there is one gripe that i have with these and that is when it sits around my neck it's fairly comfortable but there are times when i'll reach for my earphones and want to put it in my ears and i don't know if it's happened right now but if you can see the, yeah you see these wires have sort of gotten tucked under this the the neck band here so there are times when when this happens because it's being because it's being tugged at uh, i can hear a lot of the movement with it all the more because uh, the cable is being tugged so any rubbing against my shirt uh, or any movements i make i can hear because it feeds back so i have to sort of pull it back out under this and then wear it like this so this does help to a certain extent it it doesn't pull back as many uh, vibrations or scratching sounds coming from my shirt because that's taken by this. The wires are not being tugged or dragged on anything. So those sounds are eliminated. So that's the one issue I've had with it. And uh, another thing I found with these in particular is when it comes to the fit, uh, I was showcasing these to my aunt because uh, she's using an old set of Bose uh, earphones and I was trying to convince her to shift over to Yamaha because of how nice it sounds. So she's not used to the in-ear style of earphone. So uh, she sort of just put it till there and left it. You know, so if you do something like that, it's not going to sit properly. It's not going to sound right. So uh, comfort wise, I've always liked it. But one thing you have to keep in mind is when you're putting it into your ear, this little stem here has to be slotted here. It has to be pushed in a little ahead so it fits comfortably. So once it sits here, it sits very snug in both your ears. This is not the right way to wear it. This is. So you have to sort of push and twist it so it stays. So once that happens, it's fairly comfortable. These ear tips are nice and soft uh, silicone. I've never really felt any discomfort with them. It's always been comfortable to wear for prolonged periods of time. So I think the longest session I've ever done on this may be about two and a half hours or, or maybe closer to three hours uh, of just enjoying my music. And I've never felt any fatigue with these, which is quite impressive. On a feature front, Yamaha has never really leaned over to the side of wanting all the bells and whistles. They'll give you pretty much what's necessary. So this does have active noise cancelling, which I think it does fairly well. It It's not aggressive like some earphones or headphones can be. It's uh, more on a, on a medium level where uh, it's not too aggressive. So it will not cause... 
uh, any suction feeling in the ears, it will not cause you to feel uh, any nausea. Uh, whereas the ones that are aggressive, you can feel that. So I do like their approach towards this because uh, I think it's easier on the masses because a lot of people don't use active noise cancelling. In fact, when they have a set of earphones that have it and if they're too aggressive, they just don't use it. So this method they've done does work very well. The features you get in the app are fairly limited. It's like I said, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but you do get what you need. You can switch on and off listening care, which uh, I'll speak about a little more in the chapter about sound. Uh, you have a listening optimizer, which you can also toggle off and on, uh, which is also to a certain extent working in collaboration with listening care uh, to give you the best uh, possible sound in the environment you're listening to your music in. Uh, you, of course, do get your noise cancelling, which you can toggle to ambient sound, off so it goes into passive and you can go to your noise cancelling and you can also go over and put an auto power off which is quite convenient because uh, if you leave it on for too long it might just drain the battery for no reason and of course you can go into your firmware update and see uh, if you want to uh, update the firmware and uh, keep it on the latest system so that's what you get when it comes to the app in particular something else that it does perform really well at i feel is its call quality because uh, i really didn't uh, check to see how the call quality was in my first video about this i always leave that up to the uh, viewers to decide whether they like the quality or not so i have spent some time listening to that recording uh, and i'm happy to say that uh, this actually delivers one of the most natural tones across it's truer it doesn't uh, chop the audio much but uh, instead of me going on, uh, let me just give you a demo as to how this sounds in an office or home environment as well as in a crowded situation. I'm currently calling you from the confines of my studio. So expect this kind of environment to sound similar to your office or home sort of situation. So this should give you a general idea about how these earphones actually perform in this kind of setting. So uh, I have been on my camera microphone right now and I'll switch over to the EPE70A right about now so uh, one thing i did notice in my original review when it came to these earphones is uh, there is somehow no compression at least there's not much compression in your voice that's being carried over because uh, i have noticed that there's still a lot of depth in my voice that carries over uh, at least in that original recording so uh, i think uh, yamaha has done a fairly good job with the placement of these earphones uh, with the placement of the microphone sorry and uh, the, the overall vocal tonality that carries over is is very clear so uh, expect it to sound like this even if you are planning on doing any meetings over your computers uh, because this is the system that's basically governing how your voice is carried over so uh, if however by any chance you are not in this kind of setting where you're not in your office or you want to go down for a quick uh, five or ten minute break and you happen to have to take a phone call in a busy environment uh, I'll shift over downstairs to uh, the busy street that I am very close to just to give you a sense of how this would handle a busy environment so I'm calling from the usual busy street I normally make all of my call tests so I'm just to give you a sense of how much of an environmental noise these earphones are going to be battling and of course as you can see there's a lot of two wheelers four wheelers uh, on the street you might get the occasional pressure horn and of course there is some construction work going on over my left shoulder so i have been on the camera microphone all this time and i'll switch over to the epe 70a right about now so something i did notice from the original in-depth review i did was um, a lot of earphones i've noticed tend to make your voice a little choppy uh, when it comes to having environmental noise cancelling uh, some of those earphones do a good job of eliminating the noise but they don't really carry your voice over as clear as you'd like so these set of earphones i have noticed that uh, some of the noise does bleed in, but the overall vocal tonality of my voice that carries over or did carry over in that review was much truer to what any other earphone has done. So I think how Yamaha has also managed to do that is because it does have a microphone down here at one of the stems so uh, that rests lower down. So this microphone is of course much closer to your mouth than having a, a earbud over here or just a, a regular uh, earphone. So uh, the, the overall vocal clarity of this I think is superior to most other TWS earphones that I've reviewed and of course you would be the best judge to decide whether or not this kind of quality does work for you and your recipients and I do hope that this demo has given you a better understanding of this neckband in particular and I will see you back at the studio. When it comes to its battery, I've not ever really run out of it because it just carries on. It's It's got a 400 mAh capacity battery in it. And Yamaha claims that it can carry you for about 18 hours with the active noise cancelling on. And I don't doubt that at all because I'm pretty sure that Yamaha has used pretty good quality batteries in this. Something to keep in mind is if your active noise cancelling is off and if you are listening to music at a lower volume than 50%, 
it, the, the chances are that it's going to carry you for more than 18 hours for sure. Now, moving on to how this sounds, because on a volume front, I've never really found the need to go past maybe 35 or 40 percent on this set of uh, earphones because it's more than loud enough. It's more than sweet sounding enough. In fact, a lot of earphones are cranked to a much louder volume. Um, I think a lot of people listen to their music at 50 to even 80 percent and that's a little too loud. It's it's not safe to do that. And what Yamaha has done to try and keep sure that uh, it's trying to protect your ears is incorporating listening care. So the sweet spot you get uh, with Yamaha earphones is through the listening care option. You can switch it off and on, of course. But when it's when it's on, uh, it tends to boost higher and lower frequencies and uh, it's happening actively. So uh, even at lower volumes, the boost in the highs and the lows are going to be a little more than when you push the volume up to about 30 or 40 percent. So it's always trying to give you a balanced sound signature as true as it could be. So the minute you go up to 45 and 50 percent, I personally find it to get a little too loud for my liking. And then when you move on to the detail, it's it's really it, it's really effortless. I, I just I can't really put words uh, to describe how effortless this feels because uh, I have never really expected a small set of earphones like this. I think this has a 9 or a 9.2 mm uh, dynamic driver. The way it delivers everything, be it the uh, imaging, the, the staging, the, the highs, mids, lows, everything is quite effortless. It's, it's almost as if uh, it's a heavyweight just sitting in a lightweight ring, you know, there's there's no struggle with any of this when it comes to its overall sound performance. The staging on this I wasn't expecting to be as expansive as it is because it does sit, uh, say about around uh, where the earphones are, sometimes slightly wider. Most earphones tend to give you a bubble within your head, but uh, this does have a little more expanse. So it is a lot more enjoyable if uh, you enjoy music with a little more stage. Something that I like in general about all Yamaha earphones is not just this, is that they're, they're not trying to get into that whole uh, loudness war that every other earphone is in. So everyone's going ahead and using the Harman curve to a certain extent with elevated bass, uh, you know, uh, reduced lower mids, boosted upper mids and high highs. So a lot of earphones tend to have that very, very punchy and evident bass. The vocals will always sound a little nasal and the highs can sometimes be a little too aggressive for people who are sensitive to higher frequencies. So this in particular is always, uh, it's always somehow very leveled. I'm not saying that it's not a bass happy set of earphones. In fact, it is a little more on the bass heavy side, which I'm surprised that Yamaha would have tuned it this way because every other set of earphones that I've reviewed with Yamaha, they're a little lower on the bass uh, excitement uh, uh, in delivery. Uh, this is full. It's in fact, this sounds like a much larger set of earphones when you're listening to these when it comes to its bass in particular. But I'm always expecting the mid-range to have a certain amount of loss in the lower mids because a lot of people are reducing the lower mids and the upper bass region so that the lower uh, sub bass can sound more prominent. Yamaha has not done that. Uh, the vocals come through almost almost as if you're sitting in front of somebody uh, and it sounds so much truer. In fact, I was listening to a few tracks of John Muir uh, over the last few days and uh, it, it absolutely nails his vocals. And I can really appreciate this because I've been reviewing some other earphones that sit in the uh, five to 8,000 uh, price range. Uh, this is, it's certainly an, a, a, a few levels up when it comes to its overall sound. So uh, on a sound front, I mean, Yamaha has pretty much nailed it. I don't think it'll offend anybody because things aren't too bright or too uh, bloated. Uh, it, everything is more natural leaning. The timber on Yamaha earphones have always found to be uh, terrifically good. I mean, it's, it's not really audiophile levels of recovery, but uh, it's getting there. In fact, the overall approach that a lot of Yamaha earphones have that I've uh, tested in the past, all of them have a step in wanting to uh, make you enjoy music that much more in a truer sense, which is what I've seen a lot of audiophile uh, headphones and earphones do in particular. So all in all, would I still recommend this after eight months of use? I, I'd highly recommend this. In fact, something that I'm not too sure about why Yamaha isn't doing just yet is offering a two-year warranty on their products. I hope that at some point they will, but uh, I'm, I'm just a small voice in the crowd uh, because th that I think can be a huge selling point for their earphones also because Yamaha is one company that is still themselves. Yamaha is still owned and looked after by Yamaha. It is still 
a Japanese company and uh, you can see that in their build quality. You can hear it in the way their earphones sound. They have not been bought over by a Samsung or whoever else, you know, they, they are genuinely their own and uh, they have really stuck to their roots of wanting to give a truer sound. Uh, like I said, they have not got into the whole nonsense of uh, we need to be in the loudness war, we need to create the loudest earphones or headphones. They have stayed clear from that. They, they know what they want and they know what they are giving their customers. So, uh, if you do know that you certainly want to pick up a set of earphones or should I say in this case a neckband that is truer to sound that you know that you will certainly enjoy, I would still highly recommend these. These are uh, really a terrific set of earphones to own. So, uh, at today how much do they, they cost? In fact, uh, at the time of recording this video, um, the Yamaha EPE 70A has an MRP of 23,600 rupees. Uh, but what I'm seeing right now on Amazon is that there is a black model going for 17,131. But there is a white model that is going for 14,100. So very honestly speaking, if you're okay getting the white one, uh, its characteristics aren't going to change between the black and white. It's just a difference in color. I don't uh, know if there'll be a, a fluctuation between the black and white when it comes to its pricing. But either way, I really think these are value for money because honestly at 14,100, the sound this gives, it's got a very big sound. In fact, I'm not naming names, but uh, when it comes to some headphones, it does remind me a lot of uh, those headphones when it comes to size uh, in volume, uh, not in decibels, but generally the, the expanse of sound that uh, is delivered to your ears, uh, this sounds like it's got a maybe a 40 mm driver even. So I do think these are super value for money if you can get them for about 14,000 rupees. So yes, I would say that these earphones are super value for money and the neck band is a very convenient sort of setup because you don't have to pluck your, your TWS earphones out and put them in a case and all that nonsense. So it's great for if you're in the office and it's also great for if you're traveling. So I do hope that you found this video helpful and informative and I hope I've helped you make some sort of purchase decision. If you would like to support the channel, I'm sure you know exactly how to. But of course, thank you for tuning into Paul's POV for some sound advice.